Good morning. Happy Wednesday, September 18th. Super excited about this week. We are about to enter into our service business live, which is amazingly exciting. Um, I wanted to come to you guys today with a ton of information and I always bring to you what I'm hearing uh, in the field and on uh, phone conversations from our clients. Um, following trends and seeing what's new, what's exciting, and how we can best support and serve you and guide you to a better future. So today, uh, first I wanted to talk a little bit about Service Business Live, where we have a two-day workshop that is working directly with you. This isn't about content. This is about helping you to apply it to your business and walk away with a roadmap that's going to change the trajectory of your business in the next 90 days. This is not a best practice. This is about your company, what you are having struggles with, what obstacles you need to overcome, and you have access to an entire team in a small group setting that's highly participatory. So if you're missing this one, we are going to be in Houston November 14th and 15th. And we are super excited to have you guys out there. Book a call. Let's find out what is holding you back, whether it's you or what's going on in your business. Whatever it is, we have an answer. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about power of proximity. And there's multiple facets of the power of proximity. So first I kind of want to go into how we can look at this even in the service business live setting. Um, any challenges that we see that that the trades are facing is usually the same you know i don't know how to market correctly i, I can't hire anyone um, i don't have systems and processes i don't understand my cash flow i don't understand my numbers and, and we get it because you're masters at your trade this is about figuring out how to run your business but what we overlook sometimes are the simplicities that are around us and we overcomplicate our business so the power of proximity to me means putting yourself with like-minded entrepreneurs who are either doing things differently than you, same as you, better than you, but you're getting ideas of maybe something they're not struggling with, they're doing really well with, and you are learning from them as much as you're learning from us um, as the coaches, trainers. So let's think about power of proximity. Who are you hanging out with? Who are the five people that you're associating with? Is it the same old, same old, or are we putting ourselves out there to sit in rooms with people who've been there, done that? And I'm not talking about people that are way above where you are. I'm talking about right here, right now. Many of you are looking at, oh my gosh, you know, I look at this guy and he's doing, you know, $50 million. Well, are you there? Let's make our first million. Let's make our first three million. Let's make our first five million. And then we can start to talk about putting ourselves in a larger space because our brain only has the capacity to handle so much content at one time. So what are you actually extracting from that and being able to implement into your business? But one idea can change the route of your business. So how are we going to make that the reality? Let's think of other ways in which we can come at our market. So I have many, many conversations with people that are having trouble with marketing. Sandy, I, I just don't get it. My phone's not ringing. You know, I know we're entering slow season. We're all happy, right? When the phone's ringing and we have clients to see, we're going out on maintenance calls or, you know, we're looking at Anyone who has an interest, is that your ideal client? Is that your ideal job? Or are you just happy to have someone in calling and that making your phone ring? So how do we get those people into our world? So I'm going to give you a couple different ideas that I know have worked in my businesses as well as businesses that I have helped to build and manage. So let's take a look. If a marketing plan for you is going and putting your name on Google, slapping your name on your side of your truck, and thinking that people are going to flood into your world, that's not really the reality, is it? So how are we putting ourselves in a proximity and making that the powerful way to pull people into our world? So 
our minds are usually fixated on going out into the market and saying, I need to gain more traction. So I'm going to hire a marketing company and they're going to go on and magically deliver all these leads for me. Well, number one, it takes time. Number two, if you don't have a clear deliverable, if you don't have a clear call to action, if you don't know who you are as a company, if you don't have core values, if you don't know who your ideal persona is, your ideal client, your ideal avatar, whatever you want to call it, then how do we know how to market to those people? How are we speaking language that can pull them in? So that's a long-term process when we have to go and put ourselves out there on a Google platform. <clears throat> but what are you doing to bring people to you? So are you using affiliate marketing? Are you using community marketing? Are you speaking to people who are around you? Does everyone know what you do for a living? Does everyone know how you guide and serve your client? Do they know what you stand for? Do they know your services? So if we cannot articulate that value, it's going to be much harder to bring in the ideal client into your world. Are you going back through the thousands of people that you've already served? And if you are, how are we asking them for referrals? It's not a process of just asking for referrals. How are we engaging with the referrals once we get them? So businesses all around us, most of you out there have served hundreds of clients, if not thousands. How are we going back to them? What a great idea about if I'm going to Mrs. Smith's house tomorrow and being able to capture the 10 neighbors in her area and calling them and offering them a free evaluation. We're in the area. We're driving there tomorrow anyway. Your phone's not ringing. It's not just about door hangers. That's a lot of old school concept because we put door hangers on and then we do nothing more with it. But if I'm coming out to my, my client's house tomorrow and I call the people in her area today and find out if I can stop by, if I can do a discounted for me, they don't know that, whole home evaluation, what's stopping you from using the power of proximity for what you already are, are doing? You're already going to that client's house. You've already taken the time to dispatch your service expert to the home. We are able to now capitalize on that person. Hey, I was working down at Mrs. Smith's house. I thought that it would be best if we can come in and do a home evaluation for you and it's just $50, a maintenance check, if you will. And there are companies out there that strictly do only home evaluations and they're doing really well. So don't get that in your head that it doesn't work because we have clients that's making that work and they're doing it really well. So let's think about different ways in which we can utilize the people that are already around us. How many of you guys see, if you're an electrician and you see a plumber on the street, stop by and shake hands with them and ask him what he's working on? How many of you guys see construction sites and pop in and leave information and speak about projects they have going on? How many of you guys are watching landscapers up and down your street every day but have never knocked on their windows and asked them for referrals into the home? Is someone moving? Did they sell the house? Are they looking for any upgrades that they know? These people are already liked and trusted by the homeowner, but we're failing to use our own communities as a marketplace. Create your own economy. Stop being reliant on Google and Facebook for algorithms that change on the daily or that charge you exorbitant amount of fees for little leads of people who are probably calling five other vendors to come out and service them or give them estimates. So we need to create that synergy. And I think about different ways in which we can educate our market. Are you guys putting together any kind of brochures of what the latest technology is? Are we doing anything? In, and yes, of course, power of, of social media. I don't want to discount it. But there are guys out there that I know <clears throat> that I connect with that are on Instagram and they have 300,000 followers. And all they're doing is showcasing their work. Because I hear all the time, oh, Sandy, that's a great idea, but I don't have time. Well, I'm going to challenge you. 
because I'm going to ask you, what are you spending your time on? Because most of you don't have proper systems and processes in place to free up your time. So a lot of it are the same small tasks that you're doing on the daily that are not pushing your business forward. How many of you in the field still answering your phone? How many of you have your service experts having to call you with every job to get pricing? That's time wasted. So yes, you're busy. I'm glad you're busy. But busy isn't always about productive. So how can we free up some of your time, delegate to the proper people on your team so that you can become the catalyst of your business that's drawing more clients in? Your phone's not ringing because you're not doing the proper things to causing it to ring. We cannot just sit wait back for somebody's uh, sink to leak. That is not how we're creating our own economy, how we're creating wealth. We need to think strategically. And every hand that you don't shake in your community, many of you are, you know, have your, uh, your attire, your apparel on, your company logo. How many of you go to your kids' soccer games, football games, basketball games, hand out your cards, talk to the homeowners? That's part of being a business owner. Everyone in your community should know what you do. How do we go and do some kind of educational forums? How do we educate through the market? How many of you do sponsored ads with any kind of downloads so that we can create lead magnets to educate the consumer and bring them into our world so now that we own that lead? We cannot be reliant just on the same ads that everyone else is putting out there because you will become a commodity. We've got to think about what is around us and how can we capture a bigger marketplace by getting ourselves out there on our own. We have to look at the people that are in homes already. We need to be able to educate those people on who we are, how we do business, what our core values are, how we align with those that are already inside of people's homes as liked and trusted advisors and consultants. Many of you are saying to me right now, well, I don't know. I've never done that before. Well, now's the time to start. We need to think about how we can educate our consumers. How many of you are doing Facebook Lives to educate? How many of you are doing Reels on Instagram? How many of you are doing YouTube videos that are talking about what's new in technology? Stop waiting for people to call you with a problem and go out there and be the catalyst that draws in a proactive approach. Think about HVAC, all of new technology that's out there. Are you showcasing what your capabilities are? What's possible for someone's home? This isn't just about emergency repair work. These, this is about new technology that many of us as clueless homeowners have no idea that's even available. But we can talk about ductless HVAC systems, talk about geothermal heat pumps, talk about smart thermostats, talk about HVAC zoning, sensor vents, right? Solar powered HVAC systems. Any of you doing that? Any of you making videos on how you just did an installation for that or what that can do for your home and your lifestyle and your family's health and wellness? Probably not. What about plumbing? Smart toilets, right? Heated seats. We have heated seats in our car. Maybe people want heated seats on their toilet. We don't even offer that as an option. We don't talk about any of the new technology. Tankless water heaters, smart water heaters, right? People talk about efficiency, but we don't showcase ahead of time and be proactive in our approaches, right? Smart irrigation systems. What does that mean for people that live in communities where they have the irrigation? I had an irrigation system. What did that mean to me? Touchless plumbing. After COVID, some people don't want to be touching things. So do you have touchless faucets, touchless toilets? That's an option. Do we tell our clients about that? Are we on social media? Are we talking about it? Are we offering free education through downloads? Are we giving away everything that we do that makes us special in the industry? Give it all away for free. It's okay to give it away. The more that you give away, the more that you share the more that you gain the trust from the people who are around us. Don't hold back that information. We need to be in a, an environment where we're being educated and not just spoken to, or not just knowing that we need to call the plumber because our toilet doesn't flush. Go out and be proactive and educate. 
go out into the community and speak about who you are, how you do business, and why you're different than your competitors. But you need to know that first. Think about virtual technology. Talk about how that's going to save in the time that's spent in the consumer's home. Right? We're getting, we're getting faster results, more accurate results. It's not banging on something and saying, oh, we're going to be able to fix that. It's smart technology. But homeowners don't understand and they don't utilize it. We're not educated on it. That's the power of proximity. You have it all around you. It's easy. I'm delivering a live right now. But most of you are not capturing that. Again, we're not putting the systems and processes in place. We're not training our teams. We're not hiring the right people that can free up our time as an owner. It may not even be us. Maybe we're capturing our service experts on a job and they're doing a quick 20 second video and then we can put that in as a reel about a job that they just did that captures one of the technologies that I just spoke of. Electricians, energy intelligence, pretty hot topic. How many of you are utilizing that in your promotions? Are we just sending out the same tired, boring postcards that are talking about boring postcards that are talking about 20% off your maintenance or a $19.99 get me in the house door. I mean, get me in the house promo. That's not what we're looking for. How can you stand out in your market? How can we talk about why we're different? Sitting in a BNI group where we can only talk to 10 people at one time is not utilizing your proximity. Is that an hour wasted? It depends on your market. But we've got to think outside the box of what people are not doing. What are your competitors not doing? I see amazing hiring videos. I see amazing educational videos. I follow them. There are some of the plumbers that I know that are doing such amazing. Are they the best plumbers out there? I don't know. But to the outside world, they're trusted because they have 500,000 followers and they're showcasing their craftsmanship. That's where the magic lies for you guys. Your craftsmanship. Talk about your processes. Talk about why what you're doing inside someone's home is different than all of your competitors. It makes a difference, right? Electricians, energy intelligence, off-grid energy generation, solar power, sustainable materials, LED lights. What can that mean for your children doing homework in the kitchen? What can that mean for our, our environment, right? Augmented reality, again, when we talk about the virtual, being able to do faster and more accurate jobs, getting you at, in and out of the house quicker, which is going to be less of a bill, but increase how many people you guys can see a day. So how are we utilizing what's all around us in order to create better clients, have them understand that and become educated? Many of our conversations at the table are create resistance because they don't understand what we have to offer. And then we're constantly overcoming all of these obstacles. You're getting objected because we haven't educated. And it starts long before we get into the home. It starts with everyone that's around us. It starts with the way that we ask for reviews and what we ask for in our review. Again, when I talk about reviews, and many times we train at every single event that we host in training, ask for reviews, ask for referrals. It's what we ask for. It's not just about that you showed up on time, that you called beforehand, that you were nice and pleasant. I say it all the time. That's just the basics. If you're going to show up and not smile and be dressed appropriately and give a full consultation and educate the client at the table, that's just basic. If you're not even doing that, then you don't even deserve a review. But I want to see something different in a review. I want to see that we offered options that I didn't know existed. I want to see how we serve clients at a higher level. That's what this is about, about creating your own economy. Put yourselves out there. Because if I'm working in someone else's home and they ask me for a referral, I want to go with somebody who's going to educate the client. That's my client, and I'm putting my name on the line by offering you up as a referral source then I want to make sure we align with our core values. What does that mean to the outside world? Those are fundamentals, but you must have those in order in order for people to be able to be attracted to you. Like attracts like. 
So think about all this when we go out there and we say, well, what's the power of proximity? Use what is in your own environment. Train your teams to be able to educate the clients. Use social media to be a catalyst for you to get your name out there and what you stand for and how your process looks and why you're different and why your craftsmanship is different and why your warranties are different. This is a competitive market, but when I hear that our phone's not ringing, we're not using the resources that we have. Become resourceful. You're only as good as how you are resourceful. So I hope this was something that was useful for you today. If you're unsure of how to put this into your business, get on a free 30 minute call. We're gonna walk through some steps, know what you're doing now, know who you are in the marketplace, know how to guide and support you. Stop being reliant on just SEO. Everyone else is doing it. We're all trying to climb the ladder to the first position. Just like when we pick the A name in the phone book. Nothing's different. You've got to become different. You need to become resourceful in order to create a change for your company. When I hear your phone's not ringing, I think about what are you doing to create that change. So go out, have an amazing day today. Think about how we can guide, serve, and support. We're here for you. Ask questions. Be interactive. That's what it's all about. Learn from us. We learn from you guys every single day. And thank you for watching. Talk to you guys soon.